The first question of the midterm had to do with this circuit. We were asked to find the 7 amp voltage and the 7 amp resistance of that circuit at the port A, B. Well, finding that is easy. The open circuit test gives us directly the value of V7 and then that is exactly what I'm about to do. I choose node B as my reference node and node A as my node 1. I know what you're thinking. A is a binary node because in open circuit there is nothing else connected outside of that port. We only have this vertical branch here and the horizontal branch there. One is a binary node. Why are you calling that A node? Because I can, I can promote that it's convenient for me. V1 will be directly the open circuit voltage and V7. So let's proceed. One CTL equation for IX. IX is the current in this R branch, V1 minus V2 over 10, down here, control equation for IX. And then we write the three KCL equations for node 1, 2, and 3. There you have the four equations of the MNA the system of equations to solve that one. We enter them in the calculator, solve for them or do them by hand, any method you use, you find V1, V1 will be V open circuit between A and B, 2.94 volts, and that is V7 and 2.94 volts, and that is the first of the answers we need in question one. For the second part, to find R7 and we need the other test, the short circuit test. Absolutely. The short circuit test is performed by shorting the port AB. A wire is added between A and B that transforms node A into an extension of the reference. You see, it's a reference node. We don't have node 1 anymore. We have only node 2 and node 3 and IX. So the equations are going to be very much the same with a few changes. Ix remains to be the same. KCL is gone. KCL1 is gone. We don't have KCL1 because node 1 now is part of the reference. And we know we don't write a KCL equation for the reference or any of its parts. And we are left with three equations, CTLX, KCL2, KCL3, and three unknowns, Ix, V2, and V3. We make V1 0 here, and there, and there, and well. Three equations, three unknowns. Doing that in the calculator was very simple if you had the equations in memory. You just go back and change V1 for 0 and delete this equation KCL1 and press the symbolic solver for solving that. And what do we need? Let's see. Let's see. The short circuit current, that is what we need of the short circuit test, happens to be this vertical current minus Ix going to the right. So if we compute this vertical current and Ix, we can compute I short circuit. But this vertical current is V3 minus 0, the voltage of the reference, plus 10 divided by 10. You see, I short circuit is V3 plus 10 divided by 10 minus Ix. Oh. So from the system of equations we solve for V3, negative 16.8 volts, that is the voltage down here, and Ix, which is 0 0.9 amps. We perform the operation and get the short circuit current being 0 0.263 amps. This is the short circuit current. And with VOC from the previous test, and I short circuit from this one, we divide and we get the 7 and resistance 11.2 ohms. To find the Norton equivalent, all that's necessary is divide the 7 and voltage by the 7 and resistance to get the 7 and, the, sorry, to get the Norton current. But that Norton current, you see, is the same short circuit current that we just found 0 0.263 amps. 
that is a Norton current and that is a Norton resistance equal to equal to the Thevenin resistance. The polarity, all the polarity is from B to A because we compute V Thevenin and it was positive pointing A versus B. And that is what we did. That's why the polarity of the Norton equivalent it is as shown. And that finishes the first question of your second meter. Of your second meter. And that finishes the second question of your second. No. And that finishes the first question of your second meter.